This is part two of a sequence of videos about multivariable calculus. My name is Bill Kinney. I'm a math professor at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. I'm using the computer program that you see here called Mathematica to do calculations and visualizations of things in multivariable calculus. In particular, this is part two of a sub-series about calculations with parametric curves. In part one, we used parametric curves, parametric equations, to graph uh, the motion of a bug as it traveled in a plane. We will continue with that example in this video. We'll also talk about eliminating the parameter uh, with this motion to just see what XY curve gets traced out as the bug moves. In the last video I showed you how to use table to make a list of points that you would end up plotting if you were going to do it by hand and parametric plot in Mathematica to show you the full curve, the full path that was traced out. In this video, I'm also going to show you how to use a command called manipulate to make an animation to show the actual motion of the bug as it moves. So here's our example for this video. It's really just an extension of the example from the last video. A bug is crawling in a plane. We've got distance measured in centimeters and time measured in seconds, and we've got what are called a system of parametric equations that define the motion of the bug. I've picked these particular equations that you see here over this particular time interval. I, can, I want to graph the path of the bug. I already did, did that in the previous video. I will redo it here with some extra options shown in. And I will also in this video find an equation only involving x and y, not t, for the curve the bug travels along. t, time, is called the parameter for these parametric equations. And in part b, I want to eliminate the parameter. That's what this technique will be called. All right, so here we've got the situation again from the last video. I already introduced functions to represent the right-hand sides of these equations, these parametric equations up here. I want to do one extra thing right here in this video. I'm also going to define another function, call it c. It will also be a function of time. But the outputs of C are not going to be numbers, they're going to be points. In fact, I'm going to use the other functions, F and G, to define C. C of T is going to have an output equal to the point whose first coordinate is F of T and whose second coordinate is G of T. Okay, that's a conceptual leap. Um, this is a different kind of function than you may, may be used to. You might call this a real... Um, a function that takes a real input and gives you a point as output, a point-valued function of a real variable might be the way you would describe that. That will be useful for us in a number of different ways as we continue going through these videos. I can define it in Mathematica this way. If I do it in Mathematica though, I don't use parentheses around the coordinates. Instead, I use curly, curvy braces here, just like I did when I created, when I used the table command right here. So here I'm defining this function c of t and I'm thinking of it as the point f of t comma c, g of t. In table then I can go back down here and I can replace f of t comma g of t with a c of t if I prefer to see the outputs of this function <clears throat> starting at 0 going up by increments of 0.5 and ending at 2. In other words the outputs are going to occur at 0, 0 0.5, 1, 1 1.5 and 2. And I can replace what I just had here which was this with c of t once c of t is entered and you get the exact same output. Let me show you something else I can do. I can also include t itself in this output like this. In a sense make points that have three coordinates but you do not plot the t coordinate when you plot the parametric curve. Here we see when t is 0 the point you plot is negative 3, 2. When t is 0. 0.5 the point you plot is negative 2.5 comma 1.875 etc. That's what this means. I'm going to um, put this in a table that is easier to see the output as a table. I'm going to use a formatting command called table form to plot this now or to show the output as a table. There you see it looks like a table now. Finally I'm going to add some headings to this table to uh, label these, these columns here. Uh, I'm going to put a blank list in for the uh, rows. I'm not going to ha have any labels for the rows. And then if I put another comma and then curvy braces and a T in quotes, comma X in quotes, comma Y in quotes, that will label the columns T, X, and Y. 
And now it looks just like I showed uh, for the exercise that I had you do for the first video. It looks just like the output that I showed you for that solution to that exercise. This column is the t-values, but you don't plot those. You plot the corresponding points whose coordinates are given by these numbers, x and y. Here was the full parametric curve. I want to add some options to this as well. For example, we might want to make it easier to see by making the graph thick. Plot style is a formatting option. You type plot style just like you see here, and then you make an arrow by doing minus sign and greater than sign, and watch as if I space over here, it'll merge those into an arrow. Watch, ready, one, two, three, go. There we go, it changed into an arrow. I'll do it again. Minus sign, greater than sign, space, it changed into an arrow. And in, uh, in between curly braces here, I'm going to put the word thick and red in these curvy braces to make the plot both thick and red. So it looks a little easier to see. I'm going to also label the axes with axes label, another formatting command. I'm going to put X and Y in quotes, just like I put them in quotes up here to label these columns. That will label the axes with X and Y. It's kind of small. I can make them bigger by highlighting each letter, doing a command plus, 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 say. It makes them bigger in the input here. It also makes them bigger in the output. So now you can see them better. The main thing I want to do here, though, as far as Mathematica in this video, is I want to introduce the use of the manipulate command. What I can do is I can embed this parametric plot that you see here inside a manipulate command. And you see there's a little up red arrow over here that Mathematica has put there. I have not typed that. I'm gonna, that's telling me that Mathematica wants more input. I need to put a comma here. And I, what I need to do is I need to define what I call an animation parameter, though that use of the word parameter doesn't mean the same thing as the parameter for parametric equations. Though in this particular example, it's still going to represent time. The parameter uh, variable I'm going to use is going to be the letter b, and the reason I picked b is because it's the common letter used for the right endpoint of an interval. I want b to be the right endpoint of the interval that I make the parametric plot over. So what's going to happen is Mathematica is going to make this parametric plot from many different values of b. If I change this 2 to a b, it's going to pick different values of b, in fact, between 0 and 2, and make a bunch of snapshots to make an animation, to put all those together into an animation as b increases from 0 to 2, and you're going to actually see the motion of the bug as it moves. One technicality here is I can't quite put the number 0 there because parametric plot doesn't, it spits back an error if I try to plot it from 0 to 0. So I pick a number just barely bigger than 0, like 0 0.0001, and this will make a plot. It still won't quite be ideal. We'll see what it is here. It's still not ideal. What's not ideal about it? Well, look, look at the labeling of the axes. You see a bunch of 2s there and a bunch of negative 3s down there. Something is wrong. Well, the problem is that you're so close to the starting point that essentially Mathematica has stretched out the graph of a very, very small line segment. But if we play this, you'll see the uh, scales change. And when you come to the ending here, it looks more like the original graph. Can that be fixed? Yes, with one more option called plot range you see typed as I'm typing in here, then arrow. Then you, uh, in a list, you put the, the range for x. Let's say may, maybe we'll let x go from negative, um, what would be good here, negative 5 to 30. And then you put a comma, and then you put the range for y, like negative 6 to 2, like you see down there. This will keep that plot range, that window, so to speak, fixed as the animation happens. Now at the start, you just see a little tiny line segment there and then we play it and we see the motion and what I want you to notice is that the bug is speeding up it's not a constant speed to the motion it starts out slow and ends up going pretty fast by the end in the last few minutes here I want to eliminate the parameter to try to figure out what equation only involving X and Y the bug travels along I'll do that as quick as I can that's part A right here to start that thought process, I'm going to label this with an X and this with a Y in front. And what you really want to do is you want to, um, in part B where we eliminate the parameter, you want to solve one of these equations, it doesn't matter which one, for actually not T, but T cubed. 
as a function of either x or y. Now if I take this first equation, I can solve that for t cubed as a function of x. And then once I do that, I want to replace the t cubed with here in the second equation with that function of x. And that's what I'll do. So again, solve the first equation right up here for t cubed as a function of x. I'm doing that down here. You would have to add 3 to both sides of the equation and then divide both sides by 4. You could rewrite this if you prefer as 1 fourth x plus 3 fourths. And then what you want to do is you want to take this expression and plug it in to this equation in place of the t cubed to get y ultimately as a function of x. And lo and behold, it is a linear function of x. That is the explanation for why the graph is in fact a straight line. In fact, it's a straight line with a slope of negative one-fourth and a y-intercept of two minus three-fourths. That will be five-fourths. And you should be able to see that if you look at this. The slope is negative one-fourth and the y-intercept is positive five-fourths. Real quick to end the video, here's your exercise to work on. Pause the video, write it down, work, out, work on it. Then the solution to that is down here. That exercise is a bit trickier. The curve is actually a parabola. Here's the motion. It also starts slow and speeds up. You can see it there. And then finally, when you eliminate the parameter in this one, you want to solve for t squared as a function of x. Uh, but you don't get a linear function here. y is a quadratic function of x right here. And you can look at that and check your work.